good to know what your name means. Like my name actually means as bold as a bear. But I promise you, as I'm standing here, <laughs> I don't quite feel as bold as a bear. But there was a reason why God caused my parents to give me that name. Because he knew me before I was even conceived. God knew me. And I feel like I have to live up to that name. And so like in courage, I feel like we're called to live up to that name of living in courage. Right? To be strong in the face of whatever challenges, pain, and grief you might be going through during the week. So when I ask you guys how you are, I don't take it lightly. I genuinely mean it. Because I know that for some of you, it may not be easy to be here, right? There's a lot of stuff you've gone through. And even for those who are watching online, it was the decision that you made to be here today. And so I acknowledge you. And uh, yeah, we just trust that you're going to have a great time in the Lord's presence today. So um, just some housekeeping. If you do need to use the bathroom, it's to the left and the left again. We are going to have refreshments afterward. Um, but if you do need to grab some water, um, just let us know and we'll be happy to get some for you. But I do also just want to have a very special welcome to this mama and papa <laughs> in the corner over there. So, very special welcome. So if you hear some beautiful singing, like extra, extra angelic singing, because that's what it sounded like the first time I heard them sing, it was beautiful. Um, so thank you so much for gracing us with your presence today. May you be blessed. And we have another mama over there as well. Welcome. I love that. I love that. That's so cool that, you know, the kids are bringing their parents along as well. I think it's wonderful. So guys, I actually just want to, I, I want to share, I, just, I know I can't be very long. I just want to share something that happened this week. And I don't know if any of you guys might be able to relate to this. But I, had a, I threw a little bit of a spiritual tantrum this week. Ugh. Am I the only one who throws those from time to time? I had a bit of a spiritual tantrum. Like I threw my toys out the cot when ugh, I didn't quite get my way and I was feeling a little bit selfish. And then uh, after I did that and I prayed and then God just reminded me of John 3 verse 16. And you guys probably know it by heart already, but I'm going to ask you to turn to your Bible. Because there's something special about actually reading it yourself. You probably know it by heart, right? Um, wow. And look at the techie guys. Like, I thought you guys would have been old school and had like, a, like, pa like paper, but you're like on your phones. <laughs> I mean, look at that. <laughs> like whether you're on your phone, go to John 3 verse 16. And especially in light of what we celebrated last week. Yeah, you guys probably know it off by heart, right? But read it out loud, whatever your translation is. Just read it out loud. Amen and amen. For God so loved the world that he gave. Gave. And I just felt proper put in my place this week because I felt like God, when he gave me, he never held back. When he gave to me, he gave his best. And he never held back. And that's the same way that we should give. And so, guys, do you know that right now, you either might be sitting on something that you can give to someone, or someone next to you is sitting on something that they could give to you. Did you know that? The word says, seek and ye shall find. <laughs> you might be sitting on something. So let's see, who's going to be the first one to seek something? Who's going to be the first one that finds it? Yay, Yay all right. <laughs> right. Does anybody have something that they can give to the person next to them? Does any, you got something. Have you got something that you can share with somebody? Have you got something that you can share with someone? What is it? And if you don't have... A 
And if you don't have, <laughs> no, this is not Oprah. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> Oprah, you get a sweet you can, no, 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 this is not Oprah. But no, but you know what? I literally felt, and for you guys who don't have, <laughs> I know, wasn't it so nice to actually get something that you didn't know was there? <laughs> right? But, but you can't come, can come and get some here to be able to give. But just a minute ago, you thought you had nothing to give someone. Right? Just a minute ago. You, you, and not only do you have for yourself, but you've got to share. You know? And I felt like that's what God was saying, you know? You've got so much to give. And you know, when I was throwing my little tantrum and I felt so unappreciated this week, I felt so unappreciated. I said, Lord, you've given me so much. Not that you need my appreciation. Not that you need my appreciation, but if I know how good it feels. There's a certain young man in our church that gave me some flowers and a thank you card, and he's not here right now, but I'll highlight him later. And it made me feel so good to feel appreciated. It made me feel so good to feel appreciated. So I just, you know, God doesn't need our appreciation, but he has given us so much. I gave you little hearts of sweet. But he gave you his heart and his son. He gave you his best. He doesn't need our appreciation, but we want to give him our thanks and everything that we have and say, Lord, we appreciate you. We appreciate what you've done for us. We appreciate your son. Right? So, Father, we just commit this time to you. We thank you so much. Your whole word, everything is your entire love letter to us. Father, forgive us for the times when we have not said how much we love you and we appreciate you. Today as we worship, you've actually prepared for us. You've prepared our hands to worship you. You've prepared our tongue and our bodies and everything to worship you. We cannot say that we've got nothing to give you this morning because we have, we've got so much to give you of ourselves. So we surrender and we lay everything down at your feet, Lord. And we ask you to come and have your way. Have your way in us, in this place, for those who are watching online. We thank you. We appreciate you. We couldn't give you enough, Lord, but we want to start just by saying thank you. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your hearts and enter his courts with praise. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Come on, future preacher right there. Awesome. If it's too loud, you're too old, eh? Come on. Stand with us this morning. Let's give God all the glory He deserves and much more. Amen. You guys all received a blessing this morning. That's good. Turn to the person next to you and say, You guys ready? All right. <laughs>
God's in control, amen. Thank you, Father, that we can worship you this morning. Your life for my 
this, this week I had a dream about a geography test, that I had to take a geography test. And I, I know that this means location, and it often means that God tests us. There's a test coming in terms of where you're planted and where you're supposed to be. And sometimes we leave the places we're supposed to be before we're supposed to leave them. And sometimes we stay when he says go. And, and one of the most important things is that we are rooted in Christ. And that we love God enough and surrender enough to him to say, Lord, where do you want me to go? And even when it's uncomfortable, do you want me to stay? Because there's something about being rooted where God wants us to be. And being uprooted when he tells us to that has power. There's power in position. And so I just want to pray for us this morning that we'll be able to just hear the Lord's voice in terms of where he's planted us and what he wants to do. Because he says he plants us at at streams of living water. And and when we plant it in his courts, we flourish. And so, Father, I just want to pray over this congregation today, Lord, that we'll pass the test in terms of being where you want us to be. Lord, if there's anywhere in our lives, both physically and even in the spirit, if we are planted anywhere that you don't want us to be, Lord, I pray for a surrender this morning that we may hear you. And Lord, if you're calling us to stay, if you're calling us to stay somewhere and it's uncomfortable, I just pray for your grace, Lord. And I pray that our eyes will be open to the reason, to the purpose, to the planting in Jesus' name. I pray for lives that are planted in Christ and rooted in Christ. Father, help us to hear you. Help us to hear that voice behind us that says, this is the way, walk in it. And I pray we'll be obedient to you, Lord, even if you lead us into difficult places. Even then, you will be with us. We pray that, Lord, we'll be a people who overcome tests. That if any of us are in a testing time right now, Lord, that that will be turned into a testimony. That you'll awaken hearts and minds to hear what you are saying. And that we'll understand and have revelation about what you're doing in our lives. Thank you that you're the God who leads You're the God who says that we are your sheep and we hear your voice. Lord, I pray if anybody in this room is not hearing your voice or is not in relationship with you, I pray today, Father, that you'll stir in their hearts that they might have a hunger for you and your fatherhood, Lord. For you're, you're the daddy God. You're the shepherd. You're the one who leads. You're the one who feeds. Thank you for who you are, Lord. We want to come into that partnership with you this morning and just be led by our daddy. You do great things, Lord, even in difficult situations. You do great things even when we're uncomfortable. You do great things even when you call us out of places that we're comfortable in, into uncomfortable places where we depend on you. So thank you for that dependency. Holy Spirit, bring your living water and your refreshing that we may sense your presence and know even in the hard ground, even in the testing times, that we may hear your voice and know your word for that season. It is written. I pray that be on our lips and in our hearts in Jesus' name. I want you to go to a person you haven't seen this morning and say to them, hello, high five, and who's that? You know what they say, hey? 
A noisy church is a lively church. Uh, Quentin. Quentin, just mute. One, two, three. Let's check, uh, there we go, and I'm there, come on, all right, can I also have a book, so no, yeah, thank you, right, so good morning everybody, welcome, so good to have you all here, so good to see everybody coming back, huh, come on, <laughs> and some new faces, so welcome, so good to have you here today. Um, there's a bit of a, just maybe pull down eight, one, two, there's a bit of a drone on the microphone. Okay. Okay, cool. So now you're getting closed in. So now you're in, right? Now you are so in. I'm just going to move up a little bit so I can get away from that speaker. Eight. That's where the problem is. Is it not pulling down? There we go. Cool. Are we there? See, being a sound guy, preacher guy, worship guy, hello guy, you learn these tricks of the trade, eh? Come on. And um, so, like I said, welcome everybody. So good to be here. So good to be sharing God's word with you guys. It's such an honor and a privilege to have such a weightiness, you know, to sharing God's, God's word. Has everybody received the book and has everybody received the pen? Not. And so what I'm going to do, check this next trick of mine. I'm going to put my own timer on. Eh? Yeah. One, two. Okay. Still a bit of a drone, eh? I'm just going to turn it down a bit, yeah? It's going to, there we go. All right. There we go. Cool. So. <sighs> Obviously, I'm going to start with a joke, okay? That's just, that's just the way it is. Comedy hour. And so this atheist chats to this pastor, and he says to the pastor, he asks him a question. He says to him, do you really believe that Jonah landed up in a well, oh, in a belly of a fish for three days and, and three nights? Do you really think he was there, you know? And so the pastor's like, yeah, well, it's in God's word, and, and, and God doesn't lie. It's God's breath, you know, it's his breath. That created. And so I, I really think that he was. And so the atheist says to him, but, but what if he wasn't, you know, what if it wasn't the case? And then the pastor said to him, well, when I get to heaven, I'll ask him. And the atheist said to him, but, but what if he's not in heaven? <laughs> the pastor said, well, then you ask him. <laughs> Uh, I think you should move to the back to slides, please. There's nobody at the slides. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. Okay, one last one. The father is reading a Bible story to his kids. And so he reads, The man named Lot was warned to take his wife and flee out of the city, but his wife looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. Okay? So that's the story he reads to his, his kids. And his son was sitting at him looking with his dazed face. And so after a while, he asks his son, Richard, wh wh what is the problem? So he says, Dad, uh, Lot got out, okay, and, 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 and his wife was turned into a pillar of salt, but what happened to the flea? Eh? Yeah. Because it says there, take his wife and flee out of the city. Come on, <laughs> come on. So he was stuck at the flea. All right. Cool, guys, so each of you should have received the book, and uh, so we're going to be running through this series for the next six weeks, and so I've got the privilege of uh, introduction or in, in introducing this program or series for the next six weeks, right? So the, big, the books are free to you, absolutely free. Come on, come on. 
But I am going to ask you, please can we look after them? Please can we bring them back to church? And if you join a home group, which I want you to please consider, because home groups is where the heart is, right? So if, you don't get a, if you're not in a home group, get into a home group. If you want to start a home group where you are, with, specifically with this series, we'll give you the resources to do it. There's videos that the guys can watch, and there's questions you discuss and ask and all kinds of stuff. So it's actually very easy, right? And so I've spoken to a lot of the church leaders that's gone through this program, and they say that uh, this tool has helped their churches grow in numbers of home groups. Because people are keen to say, hey, I'll put my hand up to host a home group because it actually, it's self-explanatory, right? Which is quite cool. So in the book, you'll see that there's different things. You've got places on, on page four where you can make notes of today's sermon. Um, so every time there'll be a space for you to make notes. And, and on page five, there will be questions that you answer and that will be done in your home group. Okay? And then from page 17, there is a devotional that you can do every single day right? A devotional that you can work through, so, which is quite cool. And so it just ties everything back together again to what we're going through, all right? So it means that guys aren't falling through the cracks when, we, when we're doing this series. And so even if people want to join next week, it's not too late. Get them to come. You know, invite whoever you can, because I think this is a very good topic to, to handle, right? Very big topic to discuss. And so what I want you to do now is I want you to look at your fingerprint, Right? Look at your fingerprint there. So you see all the little lines and all the little things that's happening there, and it looks like little islands that you've got there, and you know, it's, it's all pretty, and, and it's unique, right? Because it is unique. Out of the 8 billion people in this world, 8 billion people, plus minus, no one has got the same fingerprints than what you have. Come on. Some of us might have the same shape of eyes, or some of us even have double gangers. You know, people that look exactly like us somewhere in the world, but they do not have our fingerprint. <laughs> so when we were born, God gave us this unique set of identification methods that belongs to us, and it's only for me, because if I go and I put my fingerprint in a scanner somewhere, my details have been captured, my name and my surname, and you know, all those things, my ID number, and so I've got an identity, right? Right? I carry an identity. But here's the thing, guys. Hey, the question is, what is my identity in Christ? Who does God say I am? And I think that's one of the biggest things that's being attacked is our identity, right? That's the biggest thing being attacked right now in the world. All this confusion of what you identify as. Come on. I mean, it started with Adam and Eve, right? That God really said. An identity, because if you can get, if your identity could be stolen from you, if, if who you think you are can be stolen from you, and I can feed you some other nonsense, then you're going to start believing that nonsense, and then who you actually truly are is not really who you actually portray to be. Are you guys with me? Come on. And so I want to show you three circles today. Right? It should be coming up on the board. The first circle. The first circle is what God sees of me, right? What his heart is for me. Is the circle not coming up? But it's also in your books, eh? You can follow in your books. There we go. So this circle is what God thinks of me. So everything of me that God believes of me is inside this circle, right? If you look at the next circle, this circle that honing, droning. This circle is what I see of me, right? What I believe of me. That's my circle. And so it's what God thinks of me and what I think of me. Okay? Next slide. But look at this. There's three segments here. Can you guys see? There's three portions there. There's one, two, and three. So, so segment one is, is what I believe of what God believes of me. The goodness that God believes of me, I, I believe some of that, okay, of, of who I am. And obviously, segment number two is, is what God thinks of me, and segment number three is, is my truths, okay? My beliefs, my truths. And so what happens is, 
We call this here the identity gap. That is the identity gap. So that portion right here is what, is what I partner with God on what He believes of me. That's what the identity gap is. And so the aim is to become, is for the circles to become more aligned. The aim is for these two circles to become more aligned so that this gap actually becomes bigger. Hey? And so little by little, God helps us to move these two circles into one alignment so that we become more Christ-like because that is what we're supposed to be come right is to become christ-like and so the more that i'm behaving like a philistine and the more i've got stinking thinking right then I'm, i'm i'm playing in this little pool here in segment three but i'm supposed to be coming segment two right so here's the thing my poor behavior stems from uh poor beliefs my poor behavior stems from poor beliefs so so all the areas where there's a dysfunction in my life is based out of my poor belief system about myself. Come on, think about it. Because all of us are sitting here today that has got some sort of warped truth about yourself. Some sort of stinky thinking that you've been carrying around for quite a while. And because some of it has been a produce of circumstance, Right? Because you've been raised a certain way or you've been treated a certain way or there was something that happened in your life which was dramatic and now it's got an outworking in your life because you've now taken that identity and you've claimed it for yourself. But God didn't create you like that. Come on. God didn't create you to be, He created you to be something magnificent, wonderful because I, I heard, we heard something very spectacular in our previous church where the pastor said, he said that Jesus it was not an example for us. He was an example of us. Because remember, he was God in flesh. Eh? He was the ultimate example of what we should be. And so that is why, you know, Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ because we have to become Christ-like. But it's so hard. Blah, it. It's so difficult, hey, because life, people, circumstances, stuff, the devil is playing vur vur. You know what vur vur is? Hmm? You know what vur vur is? I also don't know what vur vur is, but it sounds like a... <laughs> so, so, so that's, so no wonder Paul is saying to us in Romans 12 verse 2. What does he say in Romans 12 verse 2? He says, he says, do not conform to the patterns of this world but be transformed through the renewal of our minds. We shouldn't be conformed to this world. We shouldn't do what they do. We should renew our mind because guess what? God has created us for something better. We're created in His image. So if we are image bearers, how can we behave like Philistines? Hmm? No, because it's lacquer to play there by circle three. It's too comfortable to be there by circle three. Circle one is way, you know, there by God. It's way too hard. So I'll start believing a little bit, a little bit of what, of what, you know, of what God thinks of me. But God's saying to us, come on. And so here's the thing, guys. Like I said, all of us carry some sort of false truth about ourselves. You know, for me, when, when I met my wife this year, 20 years ago, Yo, it's a long time. Wait, what do you mean? Like, why do you look at me like I know exactly how long we've been married. I need stars. So, 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 when we got married initially, I mean, we were not in God. We were not in Christ. We were Philistines. We were living hooligan lives. We were doing all kinds of stuff we shouldn't have been doing. You know, we've been doing, you know, we, we got pregnant and then got married. You know, that's most the right way the world does it. So, we, we, we fell in line, yeah? And so we believe stuff about ourselves. And one of the things that I believed, I at first didn't believe about it myself, but I, I, I was possessive and jealous. Whoa. Possessive and jealous, but like extreme possessive and jealous. And so what happened was, I was first in denial about it. I'm like, no, I'm not. And then I'm like, 
actually, I am. I'm battling with this thing of jealousy and possessiveness, and I started wearing it like a jacket. And the more I was possessive and jealous, the more I was pushing my wife away, and the more our marriage was tanking. And before I know it, man, we were separated. We were gone. We were game over. And so we were separated for 18 months, right? And there's a radical story behind it. I'm not going to go into it. But, but when, we, when God restored our marriage, I had to renew my mind on that line that I was carrying. I had to renew my mind about the fact that I was possessive and jealous. But the only way that I could renew my mind was with truth. That's how we fight lies, with truth, God's truth. And so what I did is I took my Bible and I found some scripture in the Bible and I, and I lined them and I, I typed them out and I put them in places and I spoke that truth over me every single day. Great is he that's in me that's in the world. You know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We are more than overcomers through Christ Jesus. Are you guys with me? So I took these power verses and I spoke them over me and at first I didn't believe it. At first I didn't believe it, but the more I was saying it, the more I started listening, the more I started listening, the more it started dropping into my spirit. And the more it started dropping into my spirit, the less I believed the lie. And then one day, I wasn't battling with jealousy and possessiveness. So which means that my circles was overlapping even more. Come on. And that's what God wants us to do, right? In your books, they've written down Ephesians 1. They've even done that for you. Ephesians 1. It's in your books. We're gonna, let's read through Ephesians 1 from verse 1 to verse 8. Are we there? Right. So, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessings in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Christ Jesus in grace in which he had freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Come on. There's a lot of information in there. Guys, you always hear me say, there's a lot of nuggets in there. A lot of nuggets in there. But what, what Paul is saying here, what Paul is actually saying here is, is he's describing what's happening in circle one. He's describing to us what God's heart is for us in circle number one. Right? <laughs> And let's, let's unpack it. He's saying, in verse 1, he says, I am one of God's holy people. Hey, We are holy people. What does it mean? We are set apart. We are sanctified. We have been taken from death into life. Come on. I'm no longer the stinking person. I'm now a redemptive gift. Right? Come on, I am now someone. I've been given a new identity. I'm not a walking corpse because guess what? That is what you are. If you're not in Christ, you're a walking corpse. And so now I am classified as holy. And verse 3, he says, I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. <laughs> Come on. So not just am I holy, but I'm also blessed with every spiritual blessing. So, 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 let's take Elon Musk, okay? Let's say Elon Musk gives you a credit card, a nice shining credit card. And he says to you, there's no cap, there's no limit, it's a gift. You can do with it whatever you want. And we know that we cannot outspend whatever he's making, right? It's just, it's impossible. That guy is just, he makes millions in, in his sleep. So now we take this credit card and we go, wow, this, this is so good. What a blessing. God, this guy is so mate. Wow, thank you. Yes. Yeah. And I put it in my wallet. And then two days later, I take out the card. And I go, wow, man, I'm just, I'm just reminded how amazing this guy is, man. He just, wow. And I put it back in my wallet. Two months later, I pull it out again. Oh, just, oh man. Can you, remember that day when he gave me this card? 
Sure, that's, that's just so cool, eh? And I put it back in my wallet. You see, some of us does that with what God gives us, right? The spiritual blessings. He's like, yeah, spiritual blessings. Like, oh, that's so cool. Thank you, thank you. And I put it in my pocket. Hey? Eh? And I pull it out again because I'm reminded of it. So, oh, that's right. Yes, that's amazing. Ooh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Back in my pocket. Come on. God's saying, I have blessed you with every spiritual blessing. And not just that, I'm a holy people. <laughs> and then he says in verse 4, I am chosen. I am chosen. So here's the thing. Ben, you should also know this, right? Because we do this all over the world. So remember back in school, and for some of us it's a very long time. For some of us it's a very long time. But back in school, at break time, we used to play games, right? Sports or, you know, stingers or touch rapi or, you know, soccer or whatever the case. And so the two strongest guys would usually be the captains, right? And then they'll have to choose teams. And so you all line up there, and then there's the two guys, and he goes, all right, you go here, and the guy goes, you go here, and, you know. And so the strongest players usually get picked first. Hey, isn't it true? And then, you know, and then you see the numbers dwindling down. They're like, there's six left. Now there's five left. There's four left. Now you're starting to worry because you don't want to be the last guy. And it's like, you're starting to, and you're like making eyes at the guy. Hey. <laughs> and then there's three left, right? And the three that's left is one exchange student from China, one guy in a crutch, and it's you. Eh? Yeah, because language barrier, the physical disability, and you suck. And then what they do is, what they do is they go, ah, you just fall in, you know, just choose, just fall in. Hey, come on. God's saying that I chose you. I want you to be in my team. And God chose us first. Imagine getting picked first. Hey, I remember I was picked first once. It's just because I knew the guy. Doesn't mean that I was great, but I got picked first and I felt good, you know? When you're walking across, like, yeah. <laughs> and then you look at all the guys standing down there, like, yeah, it's good. It's a good feeling. And God's saying, I chose you. I picked you first. You didn't pick God. You didn't pick God. You know, uh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll pick you, God. No. God's picked you first. Come on, that must say something to us, right? We're in the winning team, guys. He picked us first. And because he has chosen us, because we are chosen, that means in verse 5, it says that we are adopted. Because I'm chosen, I am adopted into his kingdom. Because there's two families here, right? Two families. There's, there's the devil and his cronies, and then there's God and his family. And so when I'm born, I'm born into this dysfunctional family. I'm not talking about my earthly family. I'm talking about the spiritual, physical, this spiritual, this, this dysfunctional family. All right? And we go through life and, and I'm given all these lies about who I am and all this stuff. And I go through things and, and then I make a choice to say, no, actually not. I, wanna, I want to shift families. I want to shift families. And then I move over to God's family and I get adopted into his family. All right? Because then I go from, from being a, a, a no one into a son into the house. Son in the house, right? We've been adopted into sonship. That's what it said in the scripture. Adopted into sonship. Do you know what sonship means? Sonship means that I can walk into my dad's house and I can open the fridge and I can take whatever I want from the fridge. Huh? Sonship means I can go and I can eat as much bread as I want. Hey? Sonship means whatever's in the house is mine. Come on, guys. That is what sonship means. A hireling has to come and ask. A hireling, when times get tough, the hireling runs away. But with sonship, when times get tough, we step up. You guys with me? Come on, that's the difference. And so we are 
We've been adopted into his kingdom, his rule, and his reign because he chose me first. Come on, because guess what? I'm a holy people. <laughs> and because I am adopted, he says in verse 7, I am forgiven. Hey? I am forgiven. Remember the prodigal son story? Where the lighty went to go, body and have a good time and, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and then when he had nothing left, and he was like, and then he came home, and the dad ran up to him and gave him a cloak and put a ring on his finger and threw a massive party. No consequence, just like, hey, welcome back, awesome. That's what God thinks of us. When we're forgiven and we've been adopted and we move into sonship, God has forgiven us. He doesn't forgive you and then come in and go, hey, remember that thing that you did? Hey, remember that stuff that you stole? Remember that, that thought that you had? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He doesn't do that because he says he forgives and he forgets. He wipes our slates clean. Come on. And then he says, Grace is lavished on me. Grace is lavished on me. So not just am I forgiven, but His grace is lavished on me. So what is grace? Grace is His empowerment. Grace is unmerited favor. Grace, grace gives us strength. Grace helps us with grit, right? That's what grace is. So He's saying He's lavishing it on us. He's not being stingy. He's not the, mm -mm -mm, only for half a day. No, He lavishes us with His grace. That is what it means. That's what he has in store for us. That is his circle. Holy people, forgiven, adopted. Hey, every spiritual blessing. Come on. And he lavishes his grace on us. And so all of that, all of those points is 100% true of me and 100% true of you. 100%. But we sometimes battle with it. Hey? We sometimes battle with it. Why? Because when hardships come and hard times come, and they do come, what do we do? What do we do? God doesn't love me. The Lord's not answering my prayers. Hey? We moan, we gripe, we sour. We forget all those things that God is saying about us. We're like, Lord, what have I done now? Why aren't you answering my... How many of us has had a, has tried to, you know, pick a fight with, with God? I mean, it's, it's useless. It's senseless. I know you had a... You said you had a... Sure. Because we forget about those things that God has got for us. Come on. And so that is why God wants to move those circles so that the gap, the identity gap becomes bigger in our life so that we have more of what he believes about us than what we believe about ourselves and our, th and our terrible thinking, right? Because segment three, guys, like I said, segment three, that circle, that's the devil's playground right there, right? And once you start playing in there, it's hard to get out of that space. And I remember growing up, we had a dog, dog's name was Shivas. And Shivas, no, it wasn't alcohol. I know there's a brand, Shivas, oh yeah, it's not, no, it was a real dog. It was a real dog, had teeth and, and, and everything. So Shivas was a beautiful long-haired German shepherd, right? Crossed with something. I can't remember what he's crossed with. That. But Shivas loved to swim because we, had a, we grew up in Riches Bay and so it was very hot there and so we had a pool. You cannot stay in Riches Bay and not have a pool. I'm just saying. And if you owned the aircon company in Riches Bay, you were making a killing because everybody's buying aircons left, right, and center, right? We actually knew one guy that owned a, yeah. And so he looked like a father Christmas. He had a massive beard, Marnie. He was our neighbor. Anyway, so we had a pool and we had this dog, Shivas. And so Shivas just loved to swim. But Shivas didn't like sharing the pool. It was Shivas's pool. Okay? And so me and my brother will try, one will try and distract the dog, and then the other one will run and jump into the pool. Because she'll nip you, you know? She's fast, and she'll nip you. 
And so once we're in the pool, it's great. And then she runs around the pool and barks, 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 and sometimes jump into the pool. And <laughs> because that's what she does. It's just like teeth going and you got to just duck and she scratches you like, because she's playing with you. She doesn't know, okay? And so she'll jump out and then she'll shake all around and run around the pool and make a massive fuss because people used to know when we swim. I mean, it's just, just listen to our dog. You know, we're swimming, okay? But the trick is, it's not getting into the pool. The trick is getting out of the pool. That's the trick. Because once you're in, oh, you're in. And then she used to lay and wait. She used to leopard crawl like a, like a leopard. She used to be like. And if she sees you going for the side, she'd be like, puts her whole body down and she crouches, like ready to pounce you. That was Shiva's. And again, we had to use the same tactic, like, you gotta go. You're the distraction, right? Because once you're in, you're in. But it was, it was fun, right? But it was still painful because she scratched you and she bit you and she doesn't know. But that's the same thing here with, with that circle. You know, once we're in there, it's difficult to get out. There's a spiral there. Because guess what? The devil doesn't play fair. He hits you with one thing and then he hits you with another thing and, he, and you're getting over this one thing and then he hits you with a side swipe from that side and then he brings your dead cow that's been dead for 10 years. He brings it back with all that stuff and that smell and you're like, what's going on? And then you start believing stuff about yourself. Come on. It's like a little girl, a little girl that goes to school and she comes home and she goes, I'm so ugly and I've got no friends and I Life just sucks. Something happened at school that turned the life upside down. And then she gets home and she shares this truth that she's got with her dad. And her dad's like, but you're the most popular kid. Everybody loves you. And you're beautiful. You see, that's what we need to do. We need to go back to the Father and go, yeah, and, and we need that God remind us, actually, of who we are. You know, and so, so how, do we, how do we transform? How do we transform those circles? How do we get them to be one? Let's look at Ephesians 1, verse 17 to 18. And here's the key, right? Ephesians 1, 17 to 18. It says, I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Wow. Okay. So what I want you to do is take your pen and circle the words revelation and circle the words enlightened. You can crop in that book. It's your book. Circle the words revelation and circle the words enlightened, right? So they're basically the same meaning. So <laughs> how many of us has walked into a dark room, okay, and it's dark, and then you're trying to find your way around, and then you hit your, usually your pinky toe on a cupboard or something, right? Or you're one of those fortunate ones that steps on the Lego, <laughs> eh? How many of us have gone through that? And then what do we do immediately? Immediately we flick on the light switch, right? We're trying to find the light switch. We, we flick on the light switch. And the minute we flick on the light switch, we can actually see what's going on, right? And you can see it's a minefield of Legos. Ha! There's a lot of Legos here. I just got one. <laughs> but there's a lot of minefields there, right? And that's what Paul's saying here. He's saying, man, let the Holy Spirit help us to flick on the lights in our hearts so that we can discern and see what's happening around us. That's how we do it. With the help of the Spirit, He switches on the lights in our hearts and then, wow, He enlightens us so we can see what's going on in our lives. Hey, come on. Jesus said, I've got to leave. I've got to leave so that I can send you a help, man. I, can, I have to go so that I can send you someone that's going to be with you, guide you, and help you. And that's his function. That's his task. He's got to lead us. He's got to switch on those light switches, even if it means running down the passage in your life, going, pa, 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 switching on light switches, right? Because we need it. And so, uh, how many of us 
have had a situation or a problem and we don't have the solution. And then just like that, the Spirit comes and gives you a solution. Hey, come on, I've had that many times. Many times. Where I think, what am I going to do here? You know, then, I, then I pray, I'm like, Lord, I need this. And while I'm praying, I was like, oh, actually, yeah, I didn't think about that. Hey? Or God drops a name in your spirit, like this person. Or, 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 or shows you a picture, like, oh, yes. You know, many times I've maybe forgotten almost something, or, and then God just reminds me, hey, you almost forgot that. And I go, oh, I almost forgot that. It's not by coincidence, guys. It's how God works in our lives, right? He needs us. Come on. And so here's the thing. Many of us, like I said last week, we come crash landing into, into Christ, okay? <laughs> we, we, we crash land, and we're in there, and we are stickened, we are tired, we don't smell good, we don't look good, we are we really like the prodigal son. We had, a, we had an Ibiza, like a jaw, like, yes, and we are sat, but we come in. And then we start walking with Christ. And it's good, right? And they think, yes, this, this is good. This is good. It's going to start getting better and better. And then sometimes it doesn't, hey? And then sometimes it becomes hard. And then it becomes a maturity thing. And then like, ah. And then, then, then the devil comes and then he clops you. Hey, yo, you're not such a good oak. Hey, you don't pray enough. Hey, do you read your Bible? No, you don't. You call yourself a Christian? Mm, and he packs it on you thick and thick and thick and thick. And you're like, no, man, this is not for me. Hey, this is not for me. And so here's the thing. We need to return to the Father and say to him, actually, Lord, who am I? Who am I? And so that's why in this next five weeks, we're going to be looking at some phenomenal topics. Because remember, I, I just spoke about the identity gap today. But we need to get that gap bigger and how we're going to get it bigger is by addressing things like I am a child, I'm a servant, I'm a saint, I'm a citizen, and I'm an ambassador. That is how we're going to shift those circles to become almost one circle. It's impossible to be one circle, but we can try and get as close as possible. Because if we can broaden the gap about what we believe about ourselves in line with what God believes about me, then we're on a winning wicket. And so you're not here by chance. You're not here by accident. I firmly believe you are here because God has destined you to be here today at this time, in this place, in this venue, with this book. And so we are looking forward to journeying with you guys so we can help identify who we are in Christ. Because I don't want to play in that circle number three anymore. I'm done playing at circle number three. I want to be in circle number one. And I understand it's a process. But what I want us to do now, I want us to, in ending, there's an identity creed there in your books. The identity creed. Can we go there? The identity creed. And I want us to read that creed. Because this is going to be the creed that we journey through for the next six weeks is that creed it says I am a child of God I am made in the image of God I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ I was chosen by him before the world began I am loved more than I will ever know my father knows me my father cares for me he takes great delight in me I have been redeemed. I have been set free. I have been forgiven. I am a saint. I am loved in the beloved. I am designed and destined for great purposes in Him. I am sealed with the Holy Spirit. I am God's holy temple. I am intended to live for His glory. Christ dwells in me. I am a new creation. I am child light. I am part of the new family. I am precious. I'm called, I'm empowered, I'm God's inheritance, I'm co-heir with Christ, I have the mind of Christ, I'm dead to sin, I'm alive to Christ, I'm seated with Him in heavenly places, I am a child 
of God. Come on, guys. This is the things that we need to believe about ourselves, right? This is what we need to say. Yes, I identify with this. That is my identity, right? That thing fits me like a glove. Not you useless. Not you fat. Not you dumb. Not whatever the case, whatever, you know, whatever's going in your head right now. If something popped out in your head right now, come on. We need to address it and deal with it and kick it under the butt, right? I'm going to say under the butt because that's what we need to do. Hey, Randy, you are someone. You are chosen. You're adopted. You're forgiven. He lavishes his grace on you. Come on. You mean someone to him. He chose you, Randy. He chose you. And you're in the winning team. Come on. Shall we pray? Father, thank you, Lord, that you've chosen us first. Thank you, Lord, that your thoughts about us is, is amazing. Your thoughts about us far outweighs what we can ever think for ourselves. And Lord, so I pray this morning, Father, may those words lay on our hearts, let it drip into our soul and our spirit, Father. Lord, help us to shift those circles. Help us to make the identity gap even greater, even bigger. And so, Father, I want to come this morning, I want to speak against every lie that's been spoken over us, every line that's been placed over us through our own mouths, our own minds, or through people that has spoken over us, that's placed such a, such a lie from the enemy on us. I want to renounce it and speak death over those lies in Jesus' name. Because, Father, we are chosen, we're adopted, we're forgiven. Lord, we are a holy people. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have been chosen to be co-heirs with Christ. And, Lord, help us, help us as we go through the next six weeks, Father, to cement the identity that you have for us in our lives. In Jesus' name, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen and amen. Wow, God's good, guys. God is so good. Come on. And so when I see you, right, and I'm going to say, who are you? I'm forgiven. I'm adopted. I'm a holy people. His grace labors is over me. What else? What else? Come on. Yes, come on, guys. We need to <laughs> declare these things over us because that's how it works. That's how it works. We need to say it until we know it, until we identify with it. A somebody. Come on. <laughs> I'm a somebody. That's a good one. All right. Thanks, B. Up to you. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? I sound a bit hollow, I feel like in my head. My ears are a little bit plugged, so forgive me if I sound a bit loud. You know, when, as you were preaching, just like you, you started, I don't know, I had this image, probably because we were talking about like our fingerprints and like when, you know, like when you go into a building, you know, and you have to scan so that you can, that, so that you can enter. Um, so I had that image first of like, wow, Lord, of the 8 billion people. I know heaven's not really like this, but I think because we live in this techie world, you know, that you kind of feel like, okay, like, so like, you know, all your information is going to come up on there, <laughs> you know, as to who you are and then like enter the, enter the pearly gates, you know. <laughs> but it was, so I had that image first of scanning and entering. And then right at the end, as you did the creed now, and I just thought, Wow, you know, like when we scan something, like if it's your medical information or whatever, it has your height, your weight, it has all your information, right? Everything comes up on, this, on the screen. And I literally just felt like there was information about me pre-Jesus. You know, all my, my whole rap sheet that came up that wasn't pretty, you know. And then I just saw delete, 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 delete. And I just saw this is the information that came up now, you know, with my thumbprint. And I was like, I love that revelation. 
And I pray that we, have, we continue, because I think it doesn't matter how, how long we've been walking with the Lord, right? There's always more and more revelation with regard to, you know, our sonship and our daughtership. So I'm so excited for us guys. Um, just with regard to the giving, I know we started on this, and I think because I had that experience with regard to giving, I feel even more challenged, guys, this week when I say um, I know that every aspect of our lives, there is nothing, there is no department in your heart that is like yours. Like we sang that song this morning, and I literally... Because I've experienced it so much this week, like everything, including your finances, it all belongs to the Lord. So when we give, let us give with cheerful hearts, because that's how I believe that God wants us to give. So you can give either by placing your um, cash deposit in the, um, in the box over there, or you can give online or you can just EFT. So, yeah, guys, let's just pray ourselves out of here. This is some coffee and tea waiting for us. Father, we thank you so much. Gosh, Lord, even as I say Father now, it even just has such a freshness to it with regard to everything that you have blessed us with. And, Lord, I pray that as we, as we take the study home and we go and we have our time with you and we prepare during the week for what we're going to experience. I pray, Father, that you give us revelation of that everything. What does that everything mean that you have blessed us with in the heavenly realms? Thank you so much, Father, for even just family that you've given us. So I just thank you, Father, as we go, that your peace be upon us, be with us, let us just go and be a light to a darkened world, Lord. We love you. We thank you. And we pray this morning.